Hi, thanks for dropping by. I'm Wilson Bickford. I'm a professional artist and art instructor. And I'd like to show you some uh, techniques for doing rocks. I find that my students in my classes have a, lot, have a hard time doing rocks. To me, rocks are one of the simplest things uh, to do, but a lot of people struggle with those for whatever reason. And I've uh, picked up some tips along the way through my years of teaching experience that uh, kind of breaks things down for you. It's a little easier to digest. I have a number eight flat brush here. You can use any brush, whatever brush is comfortable for you. Obviously, it depends on the size and scale of your canvas. Bigger canvas, you'd want a bigger brush. But just for the demo purposes, I've got this small flat. I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown. Now, rocks are not always brown. Now, see, I, I'm going to use this just because it's a dark tone. Now, this does have a thin white base coat on it, which will kind of ease the application of the next paint that I put on. But basically, you want to start with a rock shape that you like, something that's believable. Rocks can be rounded. They can be more squared off and angular. So you need a believable shape. Sometimes they can simply be a rounded shape like that because they appear that way. What I see in class is a lot of people have a tendency to do this. They'll make just something that's way too pointed, looks more like a, a pyramid. They'll make it way too flat and boxy. They can't be geometric like that. They need to have some uh, interest to them. So what I do is put in the basic rock shape. Now, I'm just putting this on a, on a white canvas. Obviously, you would have this against some greenery or they'd be setting in water. You'd have a background in here. But this is just to give you an idea of the actual process of putting in the rocks. So usually, I base them in with a darker color, whatever the color might be. This is simply Charvin Van Dyke Brown. I put it in, scrub it in so there's not a real heavy, thick layer of paint there. But uh, you could put it on more in an impasto fashion if that's what you chose to do. Basically, you need a believable shape to start out with. That's the whole thing. You need something that looks like it could be that way and looks, looks like uh, something you'd see in nature. Um, I'm going to wipe that brush off a little bit on a towel. And I will add some white to that to lighten the value. Now, obviously, you don't simply have to use white. You could actually use white and a touch of red or white and a touch of yellow, depending on your background. If you had a real strong sunset, your highlights could be in a warmer vein, something along yellowish or red. So you don't strictly have to use white. But I'll say the light's coming from the right. And I just kind of lay on a lighter color. I'm going to have to go a little bit lighter than that to get it to show for you, I think. But I just kind of highlight the edge of the rock, whatever edges I think are facing the light. Now, I could leave that hard edge because maybe that rock is kind of squared off right there and has a hard edge. Uh, rocks do that. Sometimes they're soft. If you want it to look more rounded, you just wipe the brush and simply blend the edge away so there's not an edge there. It gives you the impression that it's a little more rounded. I'm going to light that up even just a little more. I want to make sure that's showing up on camera for you. There we go. Now, just because I've got that one highlight on that rock, that rock could pretty much look like that. But let's just say that maybe it's broken down into other facets and other planes and angles. Maybe there's another little angle over here that's catching some light. See how that breaks that up? That's the key. Don't go with just one big shape. It's boring. It's unnatural looking. It's too predictable. See, nobody expected to see that other angle there. Notice what a difference that makes. On the bigger rock, it's just more of the same thing. I just have to envision this and break it down accordingly to how I think it, the angles are on this rock, how I think it looks. And notice I'm using kind of an overhand grip. I can get a lighter touch and skim the paint over that wet brown rather than holding it this way, which pushes it in too much and you lose too much of the brightness and intensity of the highlight. So I lay it on with the flat of the brush, which deposits it a little heavier. It holds up a little better. And notice I keep adding white. As I'm picking up brown on this brush from the rock, I have to keep adding white into my color to keep it bright enough. And so you can put different angles in here. Sometimes I leave a harder edge, sometimes I will soften it out a little bit. But it's a pretty easy process. As I say, to me, rocks are very simple, but people struggle with these a lot. And I just could never figure out why. I think it's because they overwork them and they have a hard time envisioning the shape that they want. And so you have to see those shapes, those different planes in your mind as you break it down. You have to dream that up and put it on there. And I think that's where people run into trouble. They don't know where they want those angles. And just like I said before, um, sometimes if you got the right lighting conditions, a sunset or whatever, watch this. I'm going to sneak just a little touch of red into that white just to warm that up ever so slightly. 
If I give it that little bit of a pinkish hue, that would be nice for a sunset because it looks like you're getting some of the warm sky colors reflected into that rock. Now don't overdo it. You don't want a red rock, so you got to be subtle about it. But see how that little touch of red gives it a different flavor. And it looks kind of bland on the white canvas, but just picture that in the scope of a sunset painting where you had some of those colors in the sky. It would give you color harmony. It would tie right in. Also, sometimes you'll see reflected light on the back of the rock. And usually the general rule of thumb for reflected light is something in the bluish vein, but it doesn't have to be. If you had a red barn setting over on this side right next to the rock, maybe the red is reflecting off the red barn, you could have red reflected light. Usually it's your sky color. Um, now in this one I've already put pink in, but say that you had a, a blue sky, you could put a little touch of the blue. Again, subtlety is the key. It's bounce light, reflected light. It's not going to be as strong as your highlight. And I just kind of put a little bit of that into the darker back sides. Gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional three form. Now obviously in the context of a painting you're going to have something around it. Maybe there's going to be grass here or say that it's going to be sitting in water. If it were sitting in water you would simply take the same brown color. And now this would be painted with your sky or your water color whether it's uh, blue water or reddish uh, reflected water from a sunset. You put a little bit of a sense of a reflection underneath that rock which anchors it down makes it look like you have a reflection. So you need to anchor it to your land or your water accordingly. That's all there is to it. They're very simple. Don't be afraid to give those a whirl. Um, and for more tips and techniques, just check out my website, wilsonvictor.com, as well as my DVDs. Thanks for joining me. Have fun with it.